Hello everyone and welcome! <clears throat> Today I'm going to be talking about the Little Green Book of Chairman Rama, which is, in my opinion, one of the worst books I have ever read, ever. <clears throat> the only one that I can think of that's, yeah, like, if you watch my uh, show, like, I even saw the host and uh, read the host and didn't really hate it. I didn't like it, but I didn't really hate it that much. You know, mainly because I just kept on finding stuff that could have made a good story, but, you know, um, and, but uh, then I just sort of kept thinking, like, oh, I wish the host was about that, or about that, or about that, instead of what it was actually wind up being about. But there, there was interesting stuff, you know, and I kind of can't help but wonder, like, now that I think about it, what's what's probably worse, a uh, uh, book, a uh, story that has good ideas and squanders them, or a book or a story that doesn't really have any good ideas. And but um, yeah, I, I think the only um, thing that I that I've ever read beside this that got me like as about um, that I thought was. That, or at least got me as pissed off at the end was, I guess, Stephen Baxter's Flood. And, uh, yeah, but <clears throat> I'm kind of, you know, getting off uh, topic here. Cause, like, we're just going to start with the story, and it's kind of hard for me to describe it, so I'm just going to, like, read the back, the little flap thing here. Okay. <clears throat> the, uh, the year, in the year 2061, North and South America are under one utopian government, the Green States of America, led by the charismatic Chairman Rama. It's been 20 years since the Green Revolution ended, a thing that's really not really, uh, you know, given up too much information about because it's just weird and does make sense when you actually hear about it, um, <clears throat> has been the and in that time, the chairman government has been relocating all citizens to densely populated reservations so that most of the land can be reverted to nature and used for environmentally substantial or sustainable purposes. Right, because apparently they will gladly turn themselves all in and give up all their land to do that, right? <clears throat> Happy progressive citizens carry the little green book at all times. It is the volume of their revered leader's quotations as the animals are not lower life forms than humans, or, and in green we trust. It's bright green society, an ecologist's dream come true. The scars of the industrial age are gone, and at long last the humans of nature live in perfect harmony but it has been accomplished through brutal totalitarian rep repression, a green police state that is more repressive and murderous than any hu in human history. And I kind of want, and again, I find myself wondering, how exactly did this thing come to pass? I mean, we do get a little bit, a bit of details, but, you know, I find it just hard to believe, how, wonder how uh, something like this could sort of, Gain. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, it's it seems like it start uh, in how the book explains. Like it started out as this a whole um, like a peaceful thing, but then somehow it turned mili They turned militaristic, and then we just sort of skip all that. And and I'm just wondering, like, how exactly did this these guys? Uh, build up their society and get all enough influence so that we think they were able to convince like millions of people like give up their land and lives and stuff like that and basically just you know put themselves in these densely packed reservations I mean it was like took decades upon decades just for the Amer just for like the American military to get like the Native Americans to do that but somehow, the like the these guys that are supposed to be like all hippies and liberals and 
who most of the time are known for being like straight up pacifists, somehow managed to strong arm everyone, all of the gun nuts, all of the ev everyone, into both uh, apparently giving up their religions, because religions are illegal in this world or country, and giving up their land and just moving all the stuff onto reservations. I mean, if it's it's one thing that is like, I don't know, maybe they're blaming some sort of minority from all this stuff, but like literally everyone, because you know, then like people are not in that specific minority who are may not be, you know, pro that regime. You know, they'd be like, well, I'm not a fan, but like, hey, at least it's not me, and I don't want to get in trouble. So yeah, but in this case, like literally anyone that is not part of this regime can, you know, be arrested and killed or whatever, as we eventually read on. And, um, and, and it just doesn't make any sense. And, oh, and uh, as we further read them, in this tightly controlled society, sacred environment, the sacred environment is protected by Greenpool, a special police that hunts down eco-criminals. Like, wh what is an eco-criminal? I mean, was somebody who litters, somebody who, like, Captain Planet villains? Because I don't think any of those are around. The new country is under constant attack internally by corporate guerrillas, that's true, and is faced with imminent danger from nuclear war against Eastern Majesty of Pan-Asia. <clears throat> uh, when exactly did this happen? You know, uh, like, while apparently we were having a big green revolution, they were having uh, some kind of revolution there too, somehow? Um, while Chairman Rama is struggling to keep his utopia together, there is an accident involving a new technology, dark energy, <clears throat> MacGuffin energy, and it causes a struggling hum a startling human mutation in some random worker guy. A dangerous creature that can destroy and create. It is it is yet another instability that threatens to ruin the Chairman's perfect society. And blah blah blah. <clears throat> I mean, um, and there we have it. You already know, like, I've already stated, like, all the problems that I had, but I mean, there are even more stuff, too. Like, um, <clears throat> I mean, like, there's just, like, multiple different plot lines that just, I don't know, just weird. Like, like the one mu human mutation, you know, is like, he, this, some guy who's like, um, you know, um, just some worker, I don't remember his name, I'm never good with that, but, you know, he gets zapped, becomes a mutant, and, um, I think he has, like, a relationship with this one random chick, um, I can never really, I don't, honestly, I don't really have any, I don't know how to describe, they're just, like, I guess the, the, the lady has, like, like an older lady, who apparently has history with the chairman empire, I mean, chairman of the, uh, the chairman Rama, because apparently he has this, um, like, big harem, and some ladies move in, and they do whatever, and including sex, you know, and, you know, as well as, um, you know, r helping run his government, and, um, <clears throat> And no, but, and she was apparently working there, but I don't really see anything that, from that. Um, there's another, uh, <clears throat> so he basically just, I don't know, apparently he is in the, and, but we don't really get any sort of anything from it, you know, and eventually, uh, he just ditches the, ever the, the, the city he's living in, goes live in the wild, where he finds some other lady and falls in love with that lady, and uh, honestly, I can't, I can't really come up with any way to describe anyone. They're just there and bleh. Like the closest thing I can think of to like a character would be the um, the lady who is like had the uh, previous relationship with Chairman Rama, or 
previously worked for him anyway. <clears throat> so, um, you know, just thinking like, you know, like, um, like, I, like what I always hear about, um, whenever I hear about bad romance, I always usually say like, oh, it's better than Twilight. Oh, this romance is better than Twilight. Well, I think I might have, you know, found the one romance that was probably not better than Twilight. And in addition to this, there's also the story, there's the thing later on about how, <clears throat> like, uh, he has this one relationship with the, how Chairman Rama is, like, you know, banging this new girl, but, uh, and apparently, uh, I guess his regime, without him knowing, somehow, I don't know how, uh, killed off her family, and now she's forced to, you know, live, to be, to live away from him, and, you know, winds up getting a job as a waitress, and I just described that entire plot line in just the one sentence, and <clears throat> that that's really all there is to it, you know, and in addition to, like, really stupid, you know, stuff, um, there's also stuff that, um, <clears throat> That uh, that whole nuclear war thing, yeah, that doesn't even that just kind of just <coughs> leave these wondering like, huh, you know, um, <coughs> but more more stuff, um, you know, there's just some things that just sort of like come out of nowhere and just kind of go nowhere, you know. There's like this one instance when the villain. <coughs> I, who I guess is a villain, you know, is, you know, some corporate guy who's, like, angry, but then at him for, like, killing his family, so, like, okay, that's an uh, interesting thing, but, and it's just random stuff, like, say, um, how he's apparently doing the whole, um, <coughs> quid pro quo, fit pro quo with his, uh, own, uh, female underlings or workers, and, you know, I like it, but again, it sort of just comes up once, but then we never see it ever again, or it never comes up ever again. You know, there's this thing where, like, he has these things called, uh, these valiers, <coughs> which are these underground drill train things, which are, sound really cool, but then they come up, but, you know, then spontaneously out of nowhere, He's, he has problems working with them, because suddenly Valir technology is going from seemingly perfect and working fine to suddenly needs to be perfected because there are problems and stuff, to just suddenly winding up being perfected again, I, I whatever. <clears throat> oh, and, uh, and then lastly, I might as well just talk about the, uh, the big nuclear war imminent thing, um, <clears throat> kind of odd, uh, like, um, we, ca we get this whole, um, thing where, like, oh, what if they do threaten a nuclear war, whatever, it's like, then they say, like, oh, relax, it's okay, like, we could easily just wipe out their entire, like, the entire Euro, the Afro-Asian continents, you know, <clears throat> like, very easily with our super satellites that are in orbit, no danger, no whatever. And this is probably the closest thing to foreshadowing that we have because, well, spoilers, in the end, uh, everyone just dies. No, really, that's how it ends. I mean, <clears throat> they say that uh, he claimed one of the, some random worker guy who's, uh, I guess, keeping an eye on the, the Pan Asian, you know, guys or, or Pan Asia. You know, she's so like, I thought I, they had like a nuclear, they were launching nukes or whatever. And so I like fired on them, but then like a thingy went wrong and then suddenly everything expanded or whatever and, you know, just covered the whole planet. And like, up <clears throat> and like, not all humanity dies, like I think they're, they're, they're most likely going to be, of course, a few people surviving, but... And, and then there's other confusing thing, like, um, you know, with that mute guy that I mentioned earlier, because, like, some of his powers are just weird, like, 
one hand it showed him like being able to like having like force fields to like throw in lightning bolts or whatever with his finger then later on we see him uh, apparently somehow being able to like merge with trees and somehow being able to like merge a bunch of other people with trees somehow and making I don't know it, <clears throat> it's just stupid and and you know just the whole thing has just left me with the feeling of just like what the hell was that you know <clears throat> Overall, I'm going to have to say I give this my personal comfort level recommendation rating of a 1 out of 5. In my opinion, this thing is just confusing, it's weird, it sucks, and it's just, it's just, just don't bother. It sucks, and that's it, you know. <clears throat> anyway, next time... I'm going to be taking a look at something obviously much, much better by taking the look at the sequel to Nagato Yuki's book of choice, Ball of Hyperion. <clears throat> Until next time, see you later. Keep yourselves awesome by going out and checking out your and supporting your local libraries with your patronage, donations, money, checking stuff out and whatever. And if you have anything that you want to recommend reading for either myself or for other viewers please leave your suggestions in the comment section below and have a nice day